name is Christine Rickey and today is June 1st, 2017 and I'll be interviewing Richard Rickey at LaSalle Public Library. This interview is being conducted for the Veterans History Project, Library of Congress, the LaSalle's Project Next Generation. Where and when were you born? I was born February 10th, 1947 in LaSalle, Illinois. Who are or were your parents and what were their jobs? My parents were Frank and Mary Rickey, and my mother worked at West Fox, and my father worked for Sand Company Uniman at the end of his career. What family member served in the military, if any? What family members were in the military? If any. I have an older brother that was in the military. What were you doing before you entered the service? I was graduating from LaSalle Peru High School and was working at West Fox. In what branch of the military did you serve in? United States Air Force. Did you enlist or were you drafted? I enlisted. Why did you enlist? When did I enlist? No, why? But when was Well, you? because I wanted to go into the Air Force instead of going into the Army. Are there any reasons why? No, not really. I just thought maybe the Air Force would provide a little more training and I could get a better job when I got out. When did you enlist? 1966. Okay. What was it like to leave for training? Well, it was kind of scary because you didn't know what you were getting into. So, it wasn't that bad. So we uh, went to training down in uh, San Antonio, Texas, and after that we went to, or I went to Biloxi, Mississippi, Keesler Air Base for training in ground radio. And then after that I went to Luke Air Base, which was outside of Phoenix, Arizona. And after that I went to Newport, Thailand. Who were your instructors? I don't really remember. Did you receive any special training? Yeah, I went for training in Biloxi for ground radio. How did you adapt to the military life? Pretty well. I never had too many issues at all. Where did you serve? Uh, I, well, like I say, I went to uh, San Antonio, Texas, Lackland. Air Base for my basic training. Then I went to Keesler, which was in Mississippi, Biloxi, for technical training with the ground radio. And then I worked out in Luke Air Base outside of Phoenix. And then I worked over in Udorn, Thailand. What rank or jobs did you have? I was ground radio and I was a sergeant. What memories do you have from serving in Thailand? Probably uh, seeing some of the uh, temples and things like that over there. And that was interesting and different style of lifestyle. Did you serve on the front lines? No. What were your duties then? Ground radio, which we would uh, get calls sometimes and then we'd have to the uh, officer in charge would have to deploy sometimes aircraft to help out the ground troops and things like that. Did you see combat? No. What was it like hearing about what was going on on the front lines? What was it like what? Hearing about what was going on on the front lines. Well, it was pretty scary what a lot of the guys had to go through. What kind of friendships did you make? Oh, I met a lot of guys from different parts of the country. Most of them I lost track of after they went their way and I went mine, so I really haven't contacted any of them for years. Do you, or did you stay in touch with any of them? No, I didn't really. Where were you when the war ended? I was still in Thailand. Whether well, I was home when the war ended, actually. 
If, since you did not serve to the end of the war, why? Why? Since you did not serve to the end of the war, why? Did not what? Why did you not serve to the end of the war? Well, because I was in for four years, and my time was up to get discharged. So how did the discharge service work? Well, actually, where I was at was classified location, and I was supposed to go to um, Louisiana when I got back, but I got extended an extra month while I was overseas and not knowing that when we got back to San Francisco that we, we got discharged because people coming back from Southeast Asia at that time, if you had less than six months to serve, which I was like five months after being extended, then I got discharged. How did you return home? By plane. What was it like returning home after the war knowing that? Well, it was pretty nice to get back home after being overseas for 13 months. Was it hard being overseas without your family? Yeah, sure. But a lot of guys had it a lot worse than I did, so <laughs> it wasn't too bad. How did you stay in touch with your family while you were overseas? Uh, all I could do was write letters because actually they didn't really know exactly where I was at. Was it scary knowing that your family didn't know where you were? Yeah, it was. But um, everybody that was in my group went through the same thing. So. How did your family receive you? They were glad to see me. <laughs> <laughs> How did you readjust to civilian life? How did I do that? How did you readjust to civilian life? Oh, I didn't have any problem readjusting. <laughs> Are you a member of a veterans organization? I'm not a member of the American Legion. I never did join the VFW. Why not? I don't know. I just did the Utica American Legion and figured that was going to keep me busy enough. So. Is it like being a part of a veterans organization? That's nice because you talk to a lot of guys and they all have different stories to tell. What do you do at the organization? We really don't do it. It's not a real active organization. We do a few fundraisers for the uh, Legion, and then we uh, probably our big event is we put on a Veterans Day parade in Utica. What have you done after done after returning from the military? How did what? What did you do after returning from the military? I actually went to uh, junior college for a while. And then I ended up going into business for myself. How did war experience affect you? I think it taught you to appreciate a lot of what you actually have in this country. What are some life lessons learned? Uh, don't take too much for granted. <laughs> Enjoy your life every day. When did you learn that? When did I learn that? When I got back home. How did war experience change your thoughts about war? Well, you have mixed feelings about war. I mean, nobody really wants to be involved in a war, but sometimes it's a necessity. So you have to serve your country. What were your thoughts about war before you entered the service? Probably didn't think of a lot about war until you've actually got been involved a little bit, so. Oh. Is there anything special you remember from the military? No, not anything really in particular. Was there anything that you can remember that you really like to remember? Well, I think the camaraderie of the small group that was in our outfit was kind of unique. So that was nice. What made your group unique? Well, because there was a various uh, different ranking people in there from all over the country. It was a tight-knit group. What was it like?
like knowing people from all different places. It's pretty interesting because you found out a lot of different things went on in the country that you, you know didn't pertain to the area you were from. So that was interesting. Where were some of the places your friends were from in the group? Oh, I had friends from out east coast and I had them from down south. Yeah, from out west, so and from all over, really. Was there anyone you were particularly close to in the war? When I was overseas, I didn't really, wasn't particularly close to any of them because they were a whole new group of people. So, you know, we just got to know each other for about a year over there. But, uh, yeah, you get along with some of them you know, better than, than others, but yeah, it wasn't anybody real special, you know. What did you do when you were not, when you weren't working? There wasn't a whole lot to do, so we would exercise and do things like that around the compound. So. What was the compound like? Well, it was pretty good. It was, uh, it had guards around it and, and uh, it was pretty secure. It was just basically a house, and it was like a big apartment house, and you had all these different rooms, and so you had your own room. What was your room like? <laughs> it was just a basic room with a bedroom, that's all it was, and then you shared the like, living quarters, you know, the living room, like things like that. What was it like returning home on an airplane? What was it like coming home on an airplane? It was pretty exciting because we were glad to come back to the United States. It was a long flight, but it was all right. We were glad to get back, so it was, it was interesting. It was a good flight. Did you have to stay undercover during your flight because the war was still going on or not? No. we. Uh, we actually flew out of Bangkok, which was not in the war zone or anything, so, you know, we could just go ahead and get on the plane and go. What are some memories you have from being in Thailand? I think it was pretty interesting to see how the people lived and you know, actually they didn't have much, most of them, so it was a pretty poor country. But then you'd get around, like say you went down by Bangkok when you could get there, you know, it was almost like a westernized city, so it was like two different cultures. Did you help any of the poor people over there in any yeah. way? We did, you know, we had some people that worked at the compound and we helped them out whenever we could. Did you make any friends with the civilians? Yeah, got to know some of the workers there pretty well. Do you still keep in touch with any of them? No. Do they speak a different language? I never did learn the, uh, the language over there very well. There, you know, I had a few words I could say back then, but now I wouldn't remember how to say it. So some of the guys learned probably more of the language than I did. Did they help translate your words to the... Well, a lot of the people that worked around the compound could speak English. What was training like? Basic training. It wasn't too bad. I mean, it was a lot of, a lot of physical activity and 
marching and all that, and then learning to shoot the military type guns. But um, it was pretty good. You know, we were all young in there. We had pretty had a pretty good time. What kind of physical activity did you do? What kind of what? What kind of physical? Oh, you had to do all kinds of calisthenics. You had to run obstacle courses. You had to do a lot of marching, things of that nature. Did you know what to expect at training? No, not really, because I didn't know anybody that had gone through it other than my brother, and that was several years earlier. Did your brother tell you stories about the war? He wasn't in the war. He, when he went in, it was in like 1962, and he was in Germany most all of his career. Did he tell you anything about Germany during the war? Well, there was nothing about the war in Germany because they weren't involved, you know, in Vietnam. He traveled around Europe quite a bit. Where did he travel to? Oh, I'm trying to remember back. I know they went to France and Italy and I, probably a lot of countries that I don't remember now. So I probably went in the Air Force partially because he had been in too. So by the time he was getting out, I, and I was going in. What were your instructors like? If you're... They were pretty good. They were pretty fair. And, uh, you know, they don't put up with much nonsense, but it's the way they have to do it. Did they teach you anything important that you still remember or live by? No, it's more just physically teaching you, you know, how to, how to uh, handle the weapons and all that kind of stuff. What kind of weapons did you use? Uh, we had M16 rifles, and we didn't. That's pretty much what we used. Were you worried about using rifles? No, because I've been around rifles and shotguns all my life. So. Listening to news about combat scary, or did you know anyone that experienced scary things in the front lines? Was combat scary? Yeah, hearing about well, it. Well, of course, because you're out in the front lines and you never know what's going to happen. You know, sometimes you might get overrun by, you know, the enemy, things like that. So, yeah, nobody really wanted to be out there. It's part of the war. A lot of guys were out there a lot. Did any of your friends from the military serve on the front lines? Yeah, some of my friends that were um, in the uh, Army and the Marine Corps, a lot of those guys were on the front lines. Did you lose any friends to the military? Yeah, lost a couple over there. Was it scary hearing about losing them? Yeah. Absolutely. Nobody wants to get that kind of news. So. What did you do when you heard that you lost friends to the military? Uh, there wasn't a whole lot you could do. You were over there. And, you know, they were over here. So. What did you do to take your mind off of your losing your friend? Well, you just they play cards and different things, and you know, you kept yourself busy best you could. You know, you never really get over realizing that some of them, you know, are gone. But you just have to kind of put it aside and continue on. What kind of 
kind of messages did you rely back and forth in ground radio? Oh, it varied. It depended on what they would call in. You know, sometimes it was for air, like I said, for air support. But then when that happened, they'd call in the officer and he took charge of all that. And sometimes it was various things, you know, you'd get calls. So it varied quite a bit what we did. Actually, we kind of ran a command center, is what we really did. Although it was like classified deals, so I can't talk a lot about some of that. How does ground radio work? Well, it just works like regular radio. They have antennas and sends out signals, and the other, you know, the people in the field can pick up the signal and you know call you back and forth. It's kind of difficult sometimes when they're calling because there was a lot of static and stuff on those radios back then. So you had to make sure you heard what you thought you heard. So it was kind of difficult. And you have to work sometimes by yourself on midnights. And you'd sit there and make sure you could stay awake because some nights there wasn't much going on in there. So it was, it was interesting. Did you ever mishear a message and you transmitted it wrong? Oh, usually if it was something really important, we'd have to get it, you know, a couple times and we'd usually have the officer would get on the radio to, excuse me, to, and he would listen to it to kind of confirm that it was what we thought it was. Then occasionally we would we would work actually out in a in the small airstrips, like on mobility, and what we would do is basically control the air traffic coming in and out of the landing strips. So they would go out, drop some bombs, come back. It was like small aircraft, come in, get reloaded, go back down. So you had planes going all directions. That was kind of interesting at times. What kind of airplanes were there? They were old uh, prop airplanes that the military used for training, and then they, the way oceans got them, and they trained their pilots to fly in those. So some of the pilots didn't have a lot of training, and their biggest problem was they wouldn't learn to trust the instruments, and they because sometimes you get in a fog or something and it didn't feel like you were doing what the instruments told you and so occasionally they would crash into a mountain or something. Did you help with any of the aircraft work? Did I what? Did you help with any of the aircraft work? No. No, I was strictly in the radio deal. Mm -hmm. They had they had guided mechanics to work on the airplanes and everything. Could you use the radio to stay in touch with your family or friends? Um, not the radio when we were over there, but when we were in the United States, they had a system, I think it was called the Mars system, and it would let the military send messages to their families, and, and sometimes we would put in a deal where they would be on the phone and they could talk to them from the radio station. Did you ever send a message back with radio or just letters? I think I did a couple times to your grandma. In the, you know, that was in the United States, so that wasn't overseas. Do you have an easier or hard time learning to use the radio? It wasn't that difficult to learn to operate it, really after tech school because then when I went to 
Arizona. That's what we did out there. And then we would do mobility exercises and we would be out in the field, you know, simulated training. So you were kind of used to it. Do you know anything else more about working in your unit? What was it like working in a unit? Well, it was different, you know, from what anything you'd really done. So you went there and got to know the guys and, you know, learned how to do the job that you're going to do over there. So it was, it was an interesting job while we were over there. What kind of ranks did anyone in your unit have? Well, there was actually colonels and lieutenants and all that in the, in the unit. Then there was guys like myself that were enlisted. And in, up in that area, there were Marines and some Army guys, plus the Air Force guys over there. So I got to know some of those guys too. And they were, they were kind of basically all doing the same type, type job. What were some of the jobs of the different ranks in your unit? Well, I can't really discuss a lot of that because it was all classified location. How was it different working in a unit? Well, it was a small group which would have made it different than like being in the main shop or whatever because there, there might be, you know, a hundred guys where we probably had 15 guys. Do you still know anyone in your unit? Do I what? Do you still know anyone that was in your unit? No, not anymore. Is there a message you would like to leave for future generations? Well, I think the message is, you know, if you get called to duty, uh, you got to make that decision whether you're going to go or you're not going to go. And, you know, we grew up that you got a call, you went, and there was a lot of controversy with the Vietnam War. A lot of people thought we should not be over there. So it made it a little difficult when you went. People didn't like you going over there. So I said, I guess you got to just do what you think you have to do. And then you have to live with your decisions. So. Why do you think this message is important? Well, because I think some people now kind of lost track of the, what the military does for their country. Although lately with everything going on overseas, you know, it's probably come back quite a bit. But I do think in the United States now, especially in the grade schools and everything, they do a lot more to educate the children about the military and what went on, which is a good thing. Is there anything else you would like to talk about from your military experience? No, I don't think so. That's probably pretty much it. Did you receive any awards in the military? Oh, I, I got a lot of medals and stuff, but I can't even remember what all of them were now. It's been a few years ago. Do <laughs> you remember any of them? Do I have that? Do you remember any of them? Do you remember any of what your award No, I really don't remember what the medals were. I still have some at the house, but I don't, I don't remember what they were. Were there any special achievements you earned? I got a real nice write-up for something I had done on, to save some people. Uh, there was a plane crash or something. And, we were able to, through the radio, get help out there with helicopters and stuff to get them. So I got a real nice letter of commendation, which I still have. So. Thank you for taking time out of your day for this interview and for being my interviewee and for serving our country. Thank you.